What is up, Game Brigade? My name is Brian, and today we are going to be taking a look at Marvel Dice Thrones X-Men that is currently on Kickstarter. This is Should You Back, where we dive into a campaign, and I'm going to give you my thoughts and feelings on this campaign and let you know what I think about it, you know, with pros and cons. That way you guys can make the best back into decision going forward. So let's go ahead and hit uh, this campaign. So obviously we, we're talking about Marvel Dice Thrones. Dice Thrones in general is a expansive game, uh, which is basically a dice based game where you are going to have powers and abilities that you are going to be using uh, from your characters. Let's give you an example of what that would look like. So if we come to Wolverine here, uh, you have uh, your player board here in the center and all of these symbols are referencing dice faces that you can uh, interact with. Um, what you will do is you will roll your dice on your turn when you declare an attack and you can re-roll these dice, uh, I believe up to three times. And uh, you then are going to see what you have any matching pairs. You will then perform the ability of the dice that corresponds to something on your pamphlet here and do whatever it says. Uh, there's also over here, you can't see because my giant face, I can maybe shrink this window down and maybe, uh, no. That was nice. I actually had it open. Scrolled over. Well, oh, gee, see, look what I'm doing. I'm just ruining everything. <laughs> All right. Well, you got half my uh, desktop there. So, anyways, you got uh, where did it go? The pamphlet right here. You've got this pamphlet on this side, which also has additional abilities that are tokens that you can activate or use through the game. So that's that's the rough idea of what Dice Throne is. Now, originally, Dice Throne used a lot of um, classical characters uh, like Rogue, uh, which is kind of bad to say, uh, Hunter, Berserker, Paladin, things like that. Things from classical fantasy stories. Marvel Dice Throne, the original one, brought in the Avengers characters that you would know from Marvel uh, MCU-like products. So you have... Spider-Man, uh, Doctor Strange, um, Captain Marvel, these type of characters. So now X-Men is going to keep that Marvel license because obviously they have access to it. So they're going to keep using it. And now they're bringing the X-Men in where we're going to have uh, eight, technically nine more people to be able to play with. So we're going to talk about the pledge levels. We're going to talk a little bit about some of these characters and, and what I think about them and give you my overall thoughts about this campaign. Because one, I think there's a lot of cool things going on with this campaign. Um, in terms of the direction they're kind of going with it. But there's also some things that are like, come on, it, like the pricing of some things, the FOMO aspects where they're trying to capture you to buy more product is real. So let's talk about it. So here is the lineup of the Marvel Dice Thrones. We have these eight characters, Psylocke, Iceman, Rogue, Cyclops, Storm, Gambit, Jean Grey, and Wolverine. And if you are curious about the characters, you can scroll down here. Uh, they're also featuring a Deadpool as a bonus character, but he's not inside the, the box. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So if you are curious about the characters, you can come down here just like I did and you can click on it. And luckily they give you the full board. that You can look at all the abilities as well as uh, their, their pamphlet here, which gives you all the types of uh, abilities. Uh, in terms of like their skills. The other thing I've always enjoyed is the complexity level below this. The dice value is the com how complex this character is to use their abilities and to deal damage. Now, they don't necessarily mean how good the character is, just how complex the character is to maximize their effect. Now, my experience with Dice Throne, I have the Marvel Dice Throne. I personally don't like playing any of the complexity characters that are low. I, I think, to me, the, the meat of the game and the enjoyment of the game comes from those higher complexity characters, such as, I believe, Storm, uh, a little higher four. I think I prefer five. Uh, you've got Iceman here. Jean Grey is six. That's really cool. I really want to see what she looks like. Rogue is at three. Gambit also is pretty high, which I like is five. Gambit has a really interesting mechanic with his uh, cards. Uh, you can see here with his ace cards, I like the manipulation of your deck. Uh, very much reminded me of, um, 
oh god, I can't remember his name, Doctor Strange, who also had some interesting card play with his decks. And then you have Cyclops. I thought Cyclops was going to be like a one complexity because it's Cyclops. Uh, but he's actually a four, so that's kind of cool. And then you've got Deadpool, who's breaking the third wall, doing all the weird things that Deadpool likes to do, and coming in at a three complexity. Now, Deadpool is kind of like a weird conjunction point of this campaign. Uh, and we're going to, so let's, let's remember that. Let's say Deadpool is like a divergent point for me in terms of the direction this campaign is going. So you have all of these characters that we talked about, and these characters are going to be included in a single limited edition uh, box minus Deadpool again. So just these eight here, which is cool. I really like that limited edition box uh, that you get. Otherwise, you're going to have to buy everything at retail. And they're going to come in these four by four sets. If they, they talked about it here with OP games, of course, I'm not gonna be able to find it now, but effectively you'll have four heroes. Man, where is it? Right here. You'll have four heroes in these boxes. You could purchase these at retail. You can even pre-order them right now. If you'd like, they're $50 a piece. Uh, so there you go. So where, where do we go though from here so we've got the idea of the game we're coming in at a decent price 99 dollars uh for all of the content it's expensive for what you're actually getting in this game let's let's forget that like this game is literally dice and some vacuum sealed trays and that's it and some cards it's expensive for what it is but you're but the gameplay is very much liked by a lot of people so where where am i having issues with this campaign well, if we scroll down past all these heroes, as I said, we'll come back to Deadpool. We are going to get to, well, we didn't talk about this. And the, the next add-on, this is where they start getting with these add-ons. But I actually like this one. This is Marvel Dice Throne Missions. And this is a cooperative experience, a solo or cooperative experience, to be able to play your characters against uh, Marvel villains. And what I like about this is it's not just x-men villains you have marvel villains from the entire marvel universe which is super cool i really really like that and you're going to have boards that have different difficulty levels uh, that you are going to be able to play through and they actually have a sort of perking level up system and you have a new game plus i don't know if you guys know the term new game plus but it's like when you beat the game you get to start over the game but you usually keep some of your abilities and uh, perks that you unlocked from your previous play so they have new game plus which is actually as a huge it adds more stuff to the game to be able to get to your ability to unlock these mythic abilities which uh, are also available in the original Marvel uh, Dice Thrones, but we just play with them anyway, so I don't know if we're supposed to do that, but we do. Uh, so yeah, and then you come down here, and this is where they start getting you, the FOMO tactics. So here we have pre-painted hero sculpts. You have the hero sculpts, the eight for the X-Men Marvel, but because they're introducing this Marvel cooperative experience, you're also going to have the pre-painted sculpts for the original campaign, which were not in, these were not included as that. You just got standy characters instead, so you can get these. Now these are forty-five dollars a piece. Uh, they say you're saving five, they're, so they're saying the, the value of this is fifty dollars a piece. You're looking at hundred dollars for these sixteen pre-painted sculptures. But why I think this is a FOMO trap, where I'm really having issues with this, if we now go back to Deadpool here. Deadpool is uh, an additional character that was on, that's available. They kind of released him. Uh, he's not part of the package. So if you see here, uh, do the new g gameplay. Let's say we just want the gameplay items. You're gonna get the Marvel Dice Thrones box. You're then also gonna get, say, if you wanted the missions box, and then Deadpool will be a standalone character box, which is common. I've seen standalone character boxes, but usually they include like two characters. Uh, in those boxes. So I haven't seen too many single character boxes. So this is now coming in at $25. That's the price point that they are offering um, Deadpool at. And the Deadpool is including all of the deluxified components that we could purchase later. So you're going to be getting um, this metal uh, chromogen coin for some reason, acrylic tokens, the painted hero sculpt, as well as 50 art sleeves that are custom for um, Deadpool. As a single level thing here, it's not a bad price because if you take, uh, it's $25, 
Uh, if you take the idea of what the cost should be, about ten or fifteen dollars, um, the add-on, the these deluxified components are roughly they're saying about ten dollars. Let's say if you if you went to go buy a single hero pack, I think they're like fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. So these aren't that bad of a, a cost upgrade. But what I see this as is someone who is get, getting, let's say, all of the gameplay. So if you're just doing this all gameplay or you're doing the limited edition chest and adding in um deadpool the problem i'm seeing here is that you're going to have one character with deluxified components and everyone else without deluxified components and there are going to be a load of people who are not going to be comfortable having that when you have one character standing out so then they're going to be feeling obligated to want to buy or not even obligated they're just going to be fomo driven it's just the psychology of this network to be purchasing these pre-painted sculpts so i think it's a it's a, it's a marketing tactic obviously to encourage people to purchase these these add-ons uh, and i don't really appreciate that i think that's really shisty but what it is i would really appreciate it if they just did deadpool as deluxe and deadpool as a basic ten dollar or fifteen dollar hero pack i think the deluxified pack value broken down for all the things you're getting to it is a pretty good value but uh in the scheme of me wanting just the basic hero pack and then having a deluxified deadpool it's a little odd uh, from there you have the acrylic tokens that you can also purchase to get those tokens to match all your characters you have 40 dollars for marvel you have 40 dollars for the x-men version and 55 dollars if you want the acrylic tokens for the co-op missions again the add-ons weighing us down trying to keep up with the joneses making sure that we have all of the things I am a deluxified guy. I love purchasing board games. One of the things that drives me to them are the deluxifications, but this is very expensive. Uh, there's probably going to be uh, Etsy-like products available uh, at a cheaper rate, but that's whatever. Uh, and then we have premium sleeve cards. If you're wanting sleeves, again, to match what like what Deadpool has, where he has his custom sleeves for his character, you can get forty dollars for Marvel, forty for X Men, and five for the mission cards. Now, if we scroll back up, you can see that there are fifty art sleeves within this pack. Uh, so that's roughly the idea of how many sleeves are per character. If we come back down, I will actually say though that the cost of forty for the Marvel heroes when you have eight heroes. 40 for 50 sleeves is actually not a bad price. Uh, they're 100 micron thickness. So the sleeves are actually like probably the best deal, but you're still paying $80, $85 for just sleeves if you're trying to keep everything consistent within your, your collection. But overall, these sleeves aren't actually that bad of a price, like in terms of uh, if you were going to buy sleeves on your own that were not uh, branded and also not 100 micron thickness. Uh, and then we've got the promo pack. Uh, this is if you did not, um, maybe you bought um, this game at, at retail. You didn't get some of these um, promos that were available in the original Kickstarter for the Marvel. You can purchase that at $9. That is also showing what they kind of value those Kickstarter exclusives from the original campaign, about $9. Uh, and then you have the collapsible dice trays, $15, more add-ons. These are things that you can roll your dice into if you don't want to just roll them on the table in front of your opponent, uh, if you want to do that. And then we got playmats, and they have a whole slew of playmats here. I kind of went through these before filming to be like, oh, are any of these like really interesting? Is there anything that I would like? I like Psylocke, which you can't see because of the way I have my camera set up. Uh, so there's Psylocke. I like Psylocke. I thought she was kind of cool. Storm looked kind of cool. Um, the Dark Phoenix looked cool. I think people are just going to gravitate towards Deadpool because it's Deadpool and he's quirky like that. Uh, but other than that, there weren't too many too many of these that I was like super excited about. Uh, in terms of playmat, I have played competitive Match at the Gathering for 20 years. And I have many playmats. I've collected playmats. And I do think having a playmat uh, that is your playmat, especially when you're playing games that are card games, is something that's cool. I think I, I encourage people to have a playmat. 
Um, I don't necessarily think I would buy a specific playmat to my dice thrones, but I'm not opposed to someone who's like, I am a storm fan and I'm really in love with this art. I don't think there's a problem with that. So that's my opinion there uh, with playmats, but you're looking at $20 each. That's actually fairly reasonable in terms of what I would see in terms of buying playmats. They're usually about $20 to $30 uh, if you were to buy yourself a playmat. And now I also don't know what the sizes are. Okay, so 28 by 14 and a half. That's, that's pretty good. That's a decent size. You have the Marvel Hero Balance Kit. This is free if you purchase any box uh, in this, uh, or you can download the uh, PDF if you'd like to adjust these characters. Basically, this is a rebalancing for Thor and Miles Morales. Miles Morales was a little bit weak, and so they're giving him a buff, and then Thor had a little bit too much power, so they're bringing his power level down a little bit. Uh, so now I have an excuse as to the, every time as Loki I lost to Thor, it's because Thor was just too good. So all of those wins are now asterisks, and we're going to tell, I have to make sure I tell all my friends who beat me, that's why you beat me. So let's take a look at the pledge levels. Let's break it down. New gameplay. So this is going to include the hero box for Deadpool. That is the deluxified hero box. Dice Throne Missions, uh, which is this big box directly behind it. And the X-Men Battle Chest Limited Edition, uh, available for $170. This will also include the X-Men promo pack and Dice Throne's Mission promo pack. So remember, they, they value those things around that $9 value if it matters to you. In terms of backing advice, what can I tell you? Dice Thrones is very common to go to retail. It's going to be at retail. And the prices that you're going to see here are going to be relatively equivalent to what you could purchase at retail. Now, let's take a look over here. Uh, I pulled up a miniature market order. So this is something that's available right now if someone wanted to buy Marvel Dice Thrones. Now, rem now remember... It's not the limited edition box. So this is definitely going to affect people's purchasing power. But you could purchase the entire order of Marvel Dice Thrones. And you're looking at, with my tax, 109, which you cannot see, right there, 109.97. So $110 would be able to get me all of the Marvel Dice Thrones. So it is very, very even in terms of overall pricing when it comes to just getting... Um, the the pack here where to go the $99 pledge which they're not featuring it it's weird they don't even they don't even featuring it they're just showing all the other pledges uh, that's very odd maybe I have to scroll way up maybe it's like way up here so, yeah hmm so the original, the, the base pledge, if you're just looking for the basic pledge, which is what I bought right here, the limited edition X-Men Battle Chest, $99, that gets you a singular box to store all your stuff. So one, it's bigger, but usually these fit pretty well in your Kalax uh, to throw all your things in. And it's roughly the same price. Now you are gonna have to pay shipping. If we scroll down here to shipping, uh, the shipping's for the X-Men Dice Throne only is $10. So it's basically going to be roughly a wash buying this retail after the fact. Now, the benefit to buying this retail after the fact is that you uh, don't have to lose your money for an extended period of time, up, uh, upwards to close to a year. And you could also wait to see what people think about this product uh, at that time. And if you decide to buy it retail, you could maybe just buy four characters and try them out and see if it's for you. Rather than investing all 100 in it, you can just invest 50 and see if this is something that you might like. Or maybe those heroes are more aligned to what you want. You'll just buy the pack that fits your needs. Now, publishers are smart. They're going to know what characters you're going to want to play. And they're going to purposely put them in opposite packs because that's what they always do. Uh, let's finish up real quick, though, with this pledge levels, kind of dis discussing what else we got here, uh, and then uh, wrap up this this video. Give me, my uh, guys, my, my final thoughts. So we have the gameplay here, $169. Uh, the Marvel gameplay. So this is including the original Marvel campaign. If you, mix, if you missed that, you're looking at $260. It includes the Marvel dice pack or promo pack as well. Uh, so that way you would have all the Kickstarter exclusives. And then you have all the new things. So this is including uh, all the acrylic tokens. You're looking at all the, the minis and all the sleeves and everything. Uh, does it, I don't think it includes any um, playmats or anything. So this is just gameplay new things effectively. 
Uh, you have X-Men dice tray, mission sleeves, X-Men sleeves, sculpts, tokens, acrylics. Yeah, so no play mats or anything in included in this one. But you're looking at two hundred or four hundred and fifty dollars. That's pretty freaking high um, when it comes to uh, a game like Dice Thrones. Dice Thrones. We'll go into my final thoughts right there. And then you have the Marvel All In. So this is going to be uh, including. So this is not including the Marvel Pack. This is now including the Marvel gameplay. So you're going to add that extra money there. Five hundred ninety nine. It's also probably going to include sleeves. I would assume. Yeah, Marvel and X Men card sleeves. Marvel and X Men dice trays. So you get both dice trays. You get the sleeves. You get the acrylic tokens and the Marvel and X Men acrylic tokens. So that's why this is more than a hundred dollars here because you would think, oh, just add a pack, hundred five hundred fifty. But we're looking at six hundred dollars for the Marvel All In for Dice Thrones. That is really, really, really high. So let's let's finish finish this. Let's go to the main camera, and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts about Marvel of Dice Thrones in general, and then give you guys just an idea of what I think of recommendations. Personally, Marvel Dice Thrones for me has always been a a lower rated game and if i were to give you a fly by the pants rating it would be like a 6.2 for me it's an okay game but it is very very light but it is very much liked by the mass market of audiences out there so i think i am a bit of an outliner when it comes to this product and I have felt that way with most Roxley games. Most of their games that I've played have been a little bit of a letdown to me comparatively to what I think the rest of the people out there like. So I am trying to contain my bias about this product to give you guys the most accurate information possible. But I also want to let you guys know how I feel. I, I have not liked, like I don't play Dice Thrones myself uh, unless someone requests it. But I do like introducing people that are new to board gaming or gateway plus like gamers and tell them, hey, try this out. And they almost always like it. Like they're always like, wow, this was super cool. I want to buy this product. So I do think there is a place for this game. And I do think it's a good game for many gamers. So maybe just not for me. Given that though, I still want to own this X-Men promo, like this X-Men limited box. One, it's going to go with my Marvel box that I already have. Two, the gameplay is light enough that when my daughter gets older, we could probably enjoy playing this game together and it has characters that she's going to be able to recognize. So I think that's really cool. Um, so I, I'm here telling you I don't like this gameplay and I don't recommend playing it myself. I, I will not play it if I don't have to, but if someone asks me, I will. But I'm still thinking about buying it but only the $99 and I don't even know if I would want Deadpool because I'm so annoyed by the fact that they make Deadpool have the deluxified content. I don't really want any of the other stuff. I think it's an awful purchase to get any of the additional add-ons, but that's because I think it's, it's adding a cost to a game. You're looking at $600 for a game that's very light. And when you break it down, it's just dice yacht it's effectively some sort of combat yahtzee that that's really what it is so i hope you guys are okay with this opinion uh i know uh, again like i said i'm very much against the wind when it comes to dice stars i think a lot of people love this game and that's why i backed it originally because i heard so many good things but i was not as as impressed as i thought i would be with this product and the gameplay in general uh, and i've even tried to sell my original marvel a few times but i just couldn't get the i couldn't I didn't actually commit to it. I didn't like actually list it. I was like, okay, I'm going to sell that. It's going to go, but never did. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. My name is Brian from Game Brigade. What I want to know, we're going to have a little comment co contest here with no prize, but I am going to ask, we're going to go back to this, this scene. Me and my wife, I, you guys might've noticed I had a snip of something open when I showed my desktop. I was asking my wife, who is the best X-Men? So let's go back up to the top here. And I wanna know who you, God, where is it at? Right here, this is what I snipped. I wanna know who you guys think out of, the, out of this selection, 
who is the best X-Men? I'll give you guys a little bit of chance to think, and I will tell you my thought. I'll tell you who my wife said. My wife said Storm. She thinks Storm, out of this selection, is the most powerful. She controls the weather. She can create tornadoes and hurricanes and, and just blow you over. But I, th I think I said Jean Grey. And she said, no, 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 Jean Grey, no, no, no. I'm like, what are you talking about? She can blow up a freaking planet. And she said, that's when she has Dark Phoenix, but she doesn't always have Dark Phoenix. Well, Storm is always Storm. So we got into this little thing, and I said, whatever, you don't know anything. I'm going to go blow up some planets. And, uh, yeah, but I want to know, who is your favorite X-Men? Leave me in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. My name is Brian from Gamergate. Talk to you soon. Bye.